Big man, how's it going? Good to have you on board, Herschel. We have one of our friends all the way from New Zealand joining us. Good to have you, brother. Welcome, welcome, guys. Good to have you, Damien. How's it going? Awesome, awesome. How's everyone going? Let us know in the comment section. Good to have all of you. Awesome stuff, Asha. Thank you, thank you. Hi, Joseph. Good to have you. You have some awesome friends I can see. Okay, so we have the main man in the house as well. Hello! Yo! How's it going, brother? So good to see you. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How was your day? Yeah, man. Good. Um, did, did the push-ups to raise awareness for mental health. Um, cleaned a bit, cooked a bit, uh, worked on some uni stuff. And here we are, man, talking to young guns such as yourself. Amazing. What time is it there? It's 9.30, bro. Ah, super, super. All right, guys. So good to have you, Shad. Thank you so much for taking your time off to here. Spend some time with us. We really hope. Thank you, man. Good initiative. Sorry? Good initiative and thank you for having uh -huh. me. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure. Can we get down to business then? Yeah, man. Let's do it. All right. Fantastic, guys. So for those of you who don't know, this is Sharon Villaudan. He's an amazing guy. He's a TEDx speaker. He's the founder of an amazing initiative called Cosplay Cleanup Global. He's done so much for people you know, who are struggling mentally. Uh, emotionally and he's an advocate for mental health he's done so much for this community but Sharon for those of you who don't know you you know I know you know you're such you know uh, a very known personnel in uh, the social media world but you know who maybe one or two who don't know you and uh, besides what I just mentioned uh, who is ex who exactly is this you know Sharon Willow and what is he all about yeah man sorry about the helicopter I'm sitting on my balcony so you must have heard some helicopter go by <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, man, for the people who don't know me, I'm a mental health advocate. I'm just trying to spread a positive message as much as I can. I realize that not a lot of people are talking about taboo topics and topics that they consider a stigma. Uh, and yeah, man, I just want to motivate youth such as yourself and uh, get the message across uh, so that we can make a small difference. Because the biggest thing that I've noticed is people don't realize that they can make a difference in their capacity. That A lot of people think, oh, I'm just one person. What can you do? But actually, one person can do a hell of a lot. Um, so I'm just sitting here trying to make a difference, man. Right now, I'm in Melbourne studying for my master's so I can add more value coming when I come back to Sri Lanka someday. Uh, but yeah, man, just trying to add value in any way I can. And you came for one of my Instagram meetups as well, and we had a chat. And you saw how amazing that meetup was. People cried, Absolutely. people laughed. Man, it was incredible. Um, and it was just, it was really good. It was really good. Definitely. We'll get to that uh, our meetup in a minute. But, you know, I'd like yeah, to man. take back to, you know, how it all started, you know, growing up in Sri Lanka and, you know, what was it like, you know, uh, your younger days, your adolescent days, what sort of you know, experiences that did you go through? Uh, I know that, you know, you have a very nice story, a very touching story. So if you'd like to, you know, uh, share with the audience what exactly uh, you had to go through and how it has made you who you are today. Yeah, man. Um, so I have a single mom. Uh, so my mom's gone through domestic abuse um, and... She's gone through a lot in life um, and she brought me up while managing a lot of judgment by family and all those things. But for me, bring, coming up, um, it, was, it was not hard. I wouldn't say it's hard. My mom made sure that I was privileged. My mom made sure that she took care of everything I wanted. Uh, but it was hard in a fact where um, I was bullied as a kid. I was bullied in two different schools. Um, I was very judged by family. My family always used to say like, oh, his father was an alcoholic uh, and he was abusive. Like the son is not going to make it any further. Um, so I would have a lot of judgment. Uh, they would say that I would never make it through high school, uh, maybe through high school. They would say I would, uh, there's no point studying abroad for me. I'm studying abroad. Um, they, would, they said that um, no point uh, getting a driving license because I'll never be able to afford a car. I got my driving license. So I went through a lot of judgment uh, growing up and 
it was it was hard going through those things but um the thing is growth comes from uncomfort right and just like um kodi said the other day like we all go through things we every one of us goes through things but the thing is it's what we make of it um and because of who my mom is and because of who i be uh, who i uh, who i am becoming uh, i want to use it for good so yeah man so i've been in sri lanka since i was like 20 five um and studied there uh, all of my good friends are there people amazing people like yourself are back there but i realized that i to take a step forward that i need to to study abroad uh, and i needed to get that exposure to a different um, different country and different culture and just like bring back all of that knowledge back to sri lanka so we can all make a difference you know um so yeah man that's that's like the gist of uh, my childhood <laughs> amazing Uh, now you spoke uh, spoke about you know growing up with an alcoholic father and being you know judged by the world around you in your own blood so how do you move past something like that and how do you forgive people like that even though you know they are your own blood have you forgiven them and if so you know how do you you know let go of people like that who scientifically and biologically mean so much to you but then again you know you can't grow in life with people like that around you i think i'm still forgiving um i think ignorance is the best thing like i completely avoided them and the moment my mom understood i stopped going for family meets and all of those things um i think ignorance helped me like just take that away from me because the biggest thing for me is whenever i went to a family meet they would never make eye contact um they would never ever make eye contact when they spoke to me and they would make like really small talk and they would just yeah they just like keep their distance um and never really talked to me but i would see them talk to my cousins and everyone like their family and i would never feel that way so like for me ignorance was the best part of it just to just to cut that side of it out because i was just having fun as a kid you know like i had good friends i was having fun in school i was playing a lot of video games and play a lot of sports and just having fun you know um but uh, what i'm learning nowadays is uh, bro um holding resentment and hate takes a lot of energy out of you. um and right now i'm all about energy bro um i would rather focus my energy on being happy and surrounding myself with people such as you and positive people such as you um rather than focus my energy on hating people that have no impact in my life you know they have absolutely no impact in my life right now you know it's just my mom and myself um so like why would i waste energy in resentment so like if they ever talk to me dude you are a bigger person just approaching them and being friendly um so like if ever i see my family anyway i'm always like super friendly to them and um i just like don't give energy towards how they treated me uh because they have done good things for us as well i won't say no they have done good things for us the house that we're living in is because of my family um the car that we used to drive was because of my family like we have gotten so many benefits because my mom couldn't afford it you know but i'm talking about the judgment um but the thing is holding resentment takes so much of energy bro like you if you have an argument with someone or think of, think about uh, how much you resent that person for even half an hour of your day the rest of your day is like gone you know the rest of your day is ruined and i would rather focus that energy on uh, things that make me happy you know so for any advice for people who are going through these things like one thing is if you do have uh, a toxic mom or a toxic dad that uh, people are comparing you to I'm telling you now you are not your father you are not your mother you are you you are your own individual and your actions um are determined by you and you alone um so please don't take anything to heart um all of those things can be just like shredded off you focus on yourself and your self development um and just don't hold hate and resentment like there's no point it's just a it's just a weight that you don't need on your shoulders and how is the transition being you know moving to australia completely new culture completely new people you know uh, i know it's not for everyone but uh, from your personal experience how has it been besides being freakishly expensive good man um <laughs> i think i've learned i've learned so many things i've learned so many incredible things i've met incredible people i've got an opportunity in, in australia that i wouldn't have necessarily gotten in sri lanka and i'm not saying that sri lanka in in any bad way sri lanka is beautiful but the thing is there is so much uh, it, Australia is just um has developed a lot further so there's more opportunity to get involved in and more uh, more organizations to get involved in to do things that you like um so in that sense it's changed my life man and like i went through a really bad breakup when i was in australia as well so like 
figuring out myself and figuring out like um how to live life and uh, being on my own and teaching myself independence and just doing a lot of self awareness and self reflection bro and just learning about myself and what my strengths are but also more importantly what my weaknesses are because nobody likes to look at their weaknesses right nobody likes yeah. to look at their dark side of things so because i believe in like yin and yang there's always balance there's always balance um like i may be a super positive person but there are so many days that i'm not positive so there's negativity is part of the positivity um so like figuring out all of those things i did it in australia because i had like such a good support system around me as well looks like we're getting definitely a lot of love in the comment section which is amazing uh, definitely guys this guy is worth it all uh sir let's <laughs> talk about you know, your social media persona you know you've been known for that you know bringing life to people uh how did that all come about you know how did you realize you know okay i've been through so much maybe you know i can i can document my journey on instagram and help people out like what was the the tipping point you realize okay you know i can get into this and maybe help someone out and maybe you know prevent someone from going through what i had to uh, how how did that all come about then uh let me tell you the starting so firstly i was a food and travel uh reviewer oh, yeah i want to ask you that <laughs> uh, i i love i i used to love food i was obsessed with food but then after i learned a lot more about my mental health when i came to australia i had already contemplated taking my life back in sri lanka but i didn't really understand what it meant and understand what the implications were um but then when i came to australia and i attempted or uh, contemplated two more times and i went through depression and went through a breakup and all of those things i started to learn about myself more and what was more important to talk about um food and travel it has its own niche like people who do it keep doing it but it didn't make me happy you know and at the end of the day if you are not happy what's the point um if you are not doing something that makes you happy and motivates you to wake up or uh, and get out of bed in the morning what's the point so i completely switched um it started by me starting the be kind thing so i was part of like an insta influencer group uh a whatsapp group um and there was like 40 people in it and i just sent a message saying hey i'd like to share stories of people um where you were kind to someone and how that helped them or how someone was kind to you and how that helped you in your life um and i was just like would anyone like to be part of this and like 10 or 15 people i think 15 people came came forward and yeah out of that 15 people like another 20 people like uh joined uh, or just out of the social media stories um and yeah man after that i was just like wow this is amazing like this is what it's about like helping other people 2013 maybe 2000 um this was 2018 2 years ago oh okay Yeah, 2014 I was still doing like uh nothing. I just got on Instagram on 2014. Okay. Uh yeah, so like 2016 to 2018 I was doing like food and travel and stuff like that. Um so yeah, so then I was the dude the responses that I got for that be kind movement was incredible and the stories that I read and I was just like, "Yep, this is it. I'm going to focus on making people feel better about themselves but not be like oh everything's going to be okay. Not be that guy." but like talking about realistic shit like everything sometimes it's not okay and that's okay accepting that sometimes things are going to hit the bed uh, hit the ceiling like it's very important to acknowledge those feelings as well so yeah man after that i was just like yep this is what i'm going to do uh, andy post a nice comment saying sharon is my inspiration so as the go to person when i feel damn down thanks for being the kindest person ever thanks well, andy and the absolute uh sharon you spoke about you know uh contemplating taking your life uh, which is definitely not something to joke about and i feel like you know it has grown over the years and sri lanka has one of the biggest you know suicide rates in the world which is definitely very concerning and a very you know thought provoking act as well so could you share with our viewers you know your journey through you know battling depression to a point where you said you know i've had enough of this you know my life has no meaning anymore let's just take it so uh we never know there could be someone in our audience right now who is you know going through a tough period like that so if you could share with your own personal experiences you know what the journey was like and how you know while you were planning to take your life away what was the you know the force that made you you know maybe give life one more try and here you are today absolutely man um before i say anything trigger warning um and disclaimer if uh, anyone can't take this story feel free to leave but i'm just saying this um uh, not for attention but in the sense where you can relate to it um so the first time bro was basically in sri lanka 
um i was doing really badly at work um i was having arguments with my uh, girlfriend at the time and arguments with my mom i was losing friends because they were judging me on like changing lifestyles and all those things and Would, um just yeah, sorry to yeah, go ahead. Uh, when you mean changing no, lifestyles what exactly was uh, you know what was the transition like yeah man so i was becoming more social because <laughs> i was a very introverted guy i was very oh, introverted okay. i would never leave the house for anything and i was becoming more social like talking to people more and my friends didn't like that oh, okay. um they wanted me to not change um and they would say that i'm changing for the worse and stuff like that but not really remember me for the character that i am um so i was cutting them out of my life i believe in cutting toxicity out of your life it's quick um don't have that shit around you pretty much um yeah man so it was like a it was in a i was in a very dark place very dark place um didn't see anything um out there and when you're in those moments bro you have thoughts that when you look back you're just like why did you think that way but trust me when you're in you know in a position like that it's basically your back against the wall you either choose to fight or you choose to give up and in that in that point i wanted to give up um i basically wrote notes um or thought about the whole thing uh planned it out um everything to the point where where I was going to do it what I was going to do um what my mom would have to do afterwards so she doesn't have to like worry about anything too much everything every single thing um and then my best friend found out um that uh, all of this is going on um and in the night that I was going to do it he came in stayed the night with me um he saved me saved my life he essentially saved my life that night um and uh, he stayed the night with me and he didn't sleep while so i slept he just yeah sorry you lived by yourself at this point uh no i was with my mom this is back in sri lanka okay so mom wasn't at home back at that day mom was there but i didn't tell her anything obviously okay. um so yeah so my best friend came and he stayed the night with me man kiran cook um he saved my life that day um and he basically said man like you're an idiot <laughs> but not like that he was just like like yeah i'm not letting you do anything stupid um and your life has so much value than you realize right now in this moment and then i woke up the next day just had a normal day and then i had some thinking about it and i was just like yeah like my life means so much more but uh, the two more times after that it was just like i was alone in australia i was just not in a good place um just went through a breakup but i don't want to say the breakup was the reason it wasn't uh it was only the fact that i was in this dark place and i was alone and i didn't have anyone you know and that was i was it was a feeling of hopelessness and loneliness um and i really couldn't take it um so then i spoke to my friends again um the most important things about all of this is you're not alone um in that moment uh, you feel alone you feel like you have no one around you and you feel like maybe your friends are judging you and your parents are judging you trust me there's always help out there there's always help out there and people who are willing to listen to you um and listen to what you're going through because in those moments uh, you just want to be heard um you just want someone to listen to you you know um and i was listened to man like my best friends listened to me every single night um the second time i was contemplating in australia because i was alone i would call them like every night because um i was not in a good place but the thing is i was using them as a crutch i was using them as an excuse to just like vent so that i could get over everything um and that's not good um because i'm not taking action towards healing and what my best friends told me was dushan and kiran they basically said sharan we can listen to you every single night for the rest of your life but there comes a point where you need professional help and you need someone to help you through this so you can start to heal because you're not healing now you're talking to us getting over it going through your day the night comes again you're depressed again then you're talking to us again so it's just a vicious cycle yeah so he was like they were like talk to someone australia has the help you need uh, they have really good counselors and therapists talk to someone and then i spoke to someone man and then i was just like it changed my life bro it changed my life it saved me it saved me like i still have bad days like even this whole covid-19 situation has been hell for me you know because i was in a routine in 2019 and now covid-19 came and slapped me and said think again you know so it's just like it is tough i won't say no but you have two choices man you always have a choice you either can uh, wait around and do nothing or focus towards healing um and even though um it feels like i've taken two steps forward 10 steps back i can still take those 12 steps to get back to normal i still have that choice you know 
and it's up to you to make that choice um so yeah man that those are my personal stories so i just i know there's a lot of stigma and taboo around mental health and all of these things but there's always help out there it's up to you to reach out it's up to you if you really want to take control of your life you will no oh, that's that's generally so you know it's very very touching to hear but you know uh for your case sir you know you said you had your two best friends who ultimately ended up saving your life so can we talk about you know surrounding yourself with the right people for a minute because i feel like you know especially um the demographic surrounding my age that is you know one very key area that can definitely make or break who you are going to be in the future so clearly it's been very beneficial for you as well you know surrounding yourself with extremely you know positive and strong people uh so can you take us through both ends you know because you've had experiences with you know both type of people so is it that important you know people always say you you know you're the average of the 10 people you associate so is it that you know up you know people are making are they making sense or is it just some old wives tale that you know you should not bother about you know whoever you associate man your vibe attracts your tribe um if people are making fun of you when you're trying to tell them something um and yes it's coming from a good place but if you explain to them that it's hurting you and they keep doing it man there's so many people in sri lanka and around the world that you can make friends with trust me losing friends in your life is not the worst thing i understand especially like in sri lanka like friends are family friends literally become your family i get it but if your family yeah man but if your family is toxic trust me it's not your family trust me you need to surround yourself with people who are eternally supporting you um even if you aren't hanging out with them or anything like that but the because you're busy and the day you meet them you just click and it's like you never stop speaking that's a fucking friend sorry about sorry but that's a friend man um and like legit like i'm telling you i i joke about this all the time saying like cut out toxic friends family and relationships like you cut a maggie packet right like make it super easy and super clean um and i believe in that man like trust me the more you surround yourself with people that support you and just like you it's like as easy as breathing like having friends like that should be as easy as breathing so if your friend circle gets smaller it's okay if your friend circle gets larger with really good friends that's okay too but the most important thing is knowing where you're being triggered because if you go to them and they're not support you and that genuinely hurts you and you have an open discussion and they don't care that's a red flag um with anything with friends family relationship trust me dude trust me family doesn't have to be blood friends don't have to be bound because they were in school um you can always find new friends and it's very important that you surround yourself with a support system because you never know when you need someone one day and you just need to talk to someone you know um it's very important to be heard so that's what i think amazing guy this is definitely an opportunity you're probably not going to get for a very long time so make sure you send on all your questions guys you know like listen to all this wisdom coming out is true send me questions guys definitely annoy me also i'm here a- to be excited sorry a uh, a a big question i got sir you know everyone kept on messaging me saying ask her about relationships ask her about relationships ask her <laughs> about relationships so sharon she has relationships infatuation love what is all of this about um my first ever relationship was when i was 23 um and so i gave her really hit on you back then sorry what looks like the testosterone really didn't have a hit on you when you were a young guy man i bro i didn't know what to do man like it's just i had this whole uh, picture in my head saying like nice guys finish li- last which is oh, complete okay. bullshit it doesn't it doesn't um, but i didn't have the confidence i'm still a very insecure person like i'm very insecure about the way i look and all of those things so this girl it was just like coincidence that it happened um but i gave her absolutely everything and it broke me um i poured out of an empty cup um what i learned out of that the most important thing was give yourself the same love that you keep try keep trying to give other people um always self love is more important in any relationship um you should never ever depend on that person uh for um for something that you can give yourself i truly truly believe that um and i believe that if you aren't 100% happy with yourself 
you should not be in a relationship that's what i believe i believe that a relationship isn't the puzzle she shouldn't be fixing uh, like fixing a piece in your puzzle your puzzle should be complete should be completely finished so that when you meet this person that person adds on to your already amazing life i don't believe in completion in relationships i believe in people adding on it's like you you it's like bro it's like when you're ordering a burger but like your burger is complete you can just have a cheeseburger but then you add an extra layer of beef or an extra layer of cheese or extra layer of freaking uh, onions whatever the hell right that's a bonus and it tastes even better it tastes even better when it's 100 like when you know it's like 200% so i firmly believe dude especially like guys of your guys and girls of your age like breakups will happen being single has taught me like a lot like i love being single it's the best cuz like i have so much time for myself um use that time to learn about yourself use that time to like complete your own puzzle because trust me it's not important to be in a relationship if if it's like more of an image status to you or if it's something like that then you're in it for the wrong reasons you're in it for the wrong reasons um you should be with someone who is as easy as breathing um if it's anything harder than breathing wrong person i may be this is a very un, maybe a very unpopular opinion but that's what i've learned from it and i know that when i do get into a relationship some day it will be as easy as breathing um and that's because i've done so much soul searching i've done so much self awareness that i know what i like and i don't like because people get in relationships just because they just they just want it but what's the point what's the you know what's purpose um, yeah. what there's no purpose man always get into it with purpose and always get into it with the fact that she or he is just adding more to your life um to your already amazing life don't go searching for relationship thinking a relationship will make me happy wrong um if that's what you're looking for in a relationship trust me um every time you have a fight you will have nothing in your life that makes you happy except for her and that's unhealthy you'll be clinging on to her when you break up you will go to depression because you have nothing else to hold on to that makes you happy be independent uh, with your happiness and trust me you'll be you'll be better off I love your analogies but you know please don't say beef burger right now my mouth is watering and I haven't had it so long so next time you use an analogy you know make sure it's something that's you know sure sure so well fit- noted sorry well noted <laughs> now uh, fitness has been a very big part of your life hasn't it and you know you say it's you know escape from reality so could you share with everyone you know like when you say fitness is an escape from reality people who aren't into it might think you're absolutely crazy you know what it is just you know lifting weights and putting on some size but tell them what it's all about you know how has your fitness journey been um is it okay if i tell you like how i got into it and then absolutely. get into it um yeah man so like i started hitting the gym i was 40 kilograms uh, i people would make jokes in school saying if i turn sideways i disappear i was that thin um I started working out because I had a single mom like I told you and she has been sexually harassed in public uh, so many times when I was a kid and I was just like I took a step back and I was just like okay this can't happen so in my mind as a kid I was just like okay if I get bigger nobody will mess with me and I can protect my mom so I hit the gym hard with that discipline eating like a pig I ate like 6 7 meals a day uh within like 7 8 months i went from 40 kilograms to 86 kilograms i was oh. big my head was small my body was big okay. um and i was strong but then through that journey dude i started loving the discipline i woke up at 4:30 in the morning i had a cold shower just to wake myself up i have no idea why i had a shower before gym don't ask it was just <laughs> part of my routine um and i was at the gym before the gym instructors were there so i was there so many times earlier than them that they told me where the keys were where they hit the keys and oh, wow. i opened up the gym for everyone that was how disciplined i was so then it became uh, more than being big and strong for my mom it became discipline and routine so i figured out if i could be disciplined in gym i can be disciplined with everything in life because that's some of the hardest thing you can do right like to sculpt your mind and your body are two of the hardest things you can possibly do right because you can only control those things as well so yeah man then it became discipline after that it became confidence 
because I was more of an insecure person, like I said, I'm still very insecure, but it became confidence. Um, it really boosted my confidence. It helped me like walk around, show myself up, like present to people, go to work, all of those things. It helped with that as well. But the biggest thing that I reminded myself was, don't let it be ego. Because you see a lot of gym people at the gym, they won't smile at you, they won't talk to you because they have a little bit of more muscle than you. They think they are more entitled and more of an important person. Absolutely. So that's where I drew the line. So that was the third chapter. It's like a bloody chapter of fitness of Sharon. So then the last chapter, which I follow now, is it's my church. It's my Coville. It's my temple. It's my mosque. It's where I go to detach to attach. I detach from everything bad that's happening um, or like anything stressful, like university, work, whatever it is. And I attach to all of the things that make me happy. I reply to messages on Instagram. I hit the gym because it releases chemicals. It makes me happy anyway. I listen to really good music. I listen to rock, EDM, rap, and I just get myself in the mood and that makes me happy as well. So like that consistency made me really happy and it really helped with my mental health as well. Um, but now I don't, I haven't worked out a lot. I've worked out maybe like four times in the past two months. Um, that's because I have a emotional connection to having panic attacks at home. So it's quite difficult for me to like focus. Like I love being in the gym, you know, like disconnecting and like putting on my earphones and just being around strangers and all that stuff. So yeah, man, those are like my four chapters. Um, in like how gym has like transformed me as a person. Right now it's like balance, man. It's like just helps me like stay like sane and stay like stay focused. It's like mind that nobody can take away from me. Um, like the rock says, the rock says the gym is his anchor. And he was just like, find your anchor. Um, if it's not gym, is it reading a book? Is it traveling? Um, is it sleeping? Is it playing with your dog? Um, is it yoga? Is it meditation? Find your anchor that equates to something that nobody can take away from you. So for me, that's gym and fitness. But how do you manage with all the, you know, the, the food explorations and working out? Because I've seen your feed, you know, it's all, oh my, burgers and fries <laughs> and pizza and all that. So how do you manage you know, I, all that? With I don't food? post any food stuff anymore, but I still do. I don't have, I've never ever counted calories in my life. Never counted calories in my life. But the thing is, dude, right now, touch wood, I'm blessed with metabolism. I don't have to worry about those things. So there'll be a day where you'll see a big, nice bandi coming from Sharon, but uh, today is not that day. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Now, you know, we've transitioned into this, you know, very, you know, strong, confident Sharon from who he was back then. And now here he is, you know, starting up, you know, communities for beach cleanups and TEDx. I mean, that was amazing. So, I mean, there's not too many people in this world who have been privileged to, you know, give a TED talk. So... Can you uh, take us through that experience? What was it like? Yeah, man. Oh, dude, it was surreal. Um, I applied it for it from LinkedIn. Like, it wasn't someone I knew, none of that stuff. I just saw the link. My boss showed me the link and he was like, why don't you apply for this? I was, and I asked him, like, why? Like, nobody's going to choose me. Why would they choose me? This was still insecure, Sharon. Um, and then he, uh, he was just like, it's up to you. If you want to do it, you have to do it. It, it has to come from you. Like, I'm not going to convince you. And I was just like, yeah, I mean, like, I've done so much in 2019. Like, why not give it a go? And this was last October, I think. I was just like, let's just give it a go. And then I applied for it. Nothing. For a whole month. No word, nothing. I was just like, oh, okay, okay. I'm, I've not gotten it. Let's just, like, take it out of my head and just move on. And then, like, a month later, man, this is, like, November, I got the call. I was doing some work uh, for a firm, for a, for a brand, for a hotel brand. Um, and they called me. And I was just like, hi, this is X. Um... I'd, uh, this is Sharon, right? I was like, yeah. I was just like, yeah, I'd like to offer you the TEDx. I was just like, in my head, I was just like, do you have the wrong number? Like, are you sure, me? <laughs> it is not <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, man, had a chat. But the thing is, I was so happy that day. I called my mom first, obviously. I was like, mom, I'm going to do TEDx. She was like, what's a TEDx? <laughs> <laughs> Classic, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, anyway, I sent her a few links, and then she was like, ah, so you're going to speak? I was like, yes, yes, but it's like an established stage. Um, and, but the thing is, dude, the next day I went through a whole depression. Like, the whole day I was depressed. Because then, the side of me that is causing my depression, which is insecurity, was telling me that I didn't deserve that opportunity. Okay. Right? Which is constantly telling me, you don't deserve this. Like, what makes you think you can talk in that stage? Like, all of those thoughts were in my head the next day. So, like, like I said, 
ups and downs. You're always going to have that in life. But yeah, man, after that, um, I went on the rehearsal day, forgot all of my lines, everything, because I got so nervous. But like the people who were there who were super supportive and said, look, the energy on the day, which was the next day, is going to be so different to what it is now. Uh, the, there's going to be so many people, you're just going to vibe with someone and you're going to smash it. We know you're going to smash it because the story is coming from your heart. That's why TEDx is so uh, important because every story is coming from someone's heart. Um, so yeah, man, the next day, like I just rocked up, uh, had to lead up from this amazing uh, lady who did like an amazing speech, which made me nervous. But then as I got up there, dude, I was just like, Sharon, just speak from the heart. Before I went there on the day, I listened to Frank Sinatra's My Way for like on repeat for like a good half an hour. And I just re reminded myself, this is what I did. I didn't do it through context. I didn't do it through influence. I built my brand in Australia and I did it myself. That's what is most important. Like that's what gives me goosebumps to this day. Everything I've done over the past year has been my work. Nobody backed me up. Um, and I made my networks and connections. Would so I listened to Frank Sinatra. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, would you call yourself a self-made man today? Uh, no, man. I wouldn't call myself self-made because my family and my mom have helped me. Um, I, the finances that have come in are not my money. So I wouldn't say I'm self-made. But I'm saying my mentality and the connections I made was me. Um, nobody told me to do it. Nobody guided me. Nobody pushed me. I researched, I read, and I did it. Um, but um, <laughs> what's a TEDx Sharon's mom? Um, but yeah, man, I just listened to Frank Sinatra. And then when I was ready, I called a cab and went there and then smashed it. I hope I smashed it. What did you think? Oh, absolutely. No two words. If you haven't seen it, guys, you need to check it out. It's called The Art of Storytelling, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, storytelling and its impact on social change. Sorry, yeah. It's genuinely amazing, guys. You need to check it out. And Cosplay Cleanup, what's all that about? If For those of, uh, who don't know it. So I'll first explain what cosplay is. Cosplay is people who dress up as superheroes uh, that they love and they go for like comic cons and all of those things, which is super awesome. Like if you're like a geek like me, like you love that stuff. Um, cleaning up, um, I, my mom and I did our first mother-son trip uh, to Jaffna um, back in 2019, January. Um, and basically... We went to Jaffna, we had a good time, and we went to this beach. I can't remember what it's called. It's called KK Beach or something. And bro, it's so nice. So many families playing and kites are flying and children are running around and all that stuff. It's super clean. But I go to this little corner, right? I climb up, me being a little adventurist, I climbed up this little rock. And in between this little structure, there was easily like a ton of plastic bottles. And I took a picture and I showed my mom as well. And I was just like, wow, like, what is this? Like, why are we being so ignorant towards nature? And like, this is affecting everything. And I was just like, what do I do in that moment? So then that was just a thought in my mind. And then when I came back to Australia, I went to a comic con and I saw amazing things. And I was just like, okay, whatever, whatever. I didn't really link it at that point. And then I met Lauren and I was, then we met up for coffee. And then I, we spoke about like our uh, interests like she loved uh, geek stuff she loved cleaning up like she's she's the science part of this um i'm the action part like where i put things into place um and yeah man we just got to talking we're just like why don't we do this like this sounds super awesome obviously everything has slowed down now um we couldn't do a lot but yeah man we put together cosplay cleanup uh, got superheroes to come together and we did four international events uh two victorian ones so two in melbourne one in Sri Lanka, which I came down for, and one in Malaysia within three months. Far out. That was, and two full time university students uh, did that. And I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of that because the thing is, dude, even if cosplay cleanup doesn't blow up, we inspired a movement. You know, we got people thinking because it's not a cleanup, bro. Cosplay cleanup is not a cleanup page, it's a movement page because we inspire people to be everyday superheroes. If you see a piece of plastic on the road or trash on the road, pick it up, throw it. Um, if you can stop using plastic bags at home, stop using plastic bags at home. Even those little changes that an individual can do can help change the whole thing, man. It's just influencing people that way as well. So for me, it's a movement, bro. So like, even if cosplay cleanup doesn't blow up to what I want it to be, 
as long as i can influence people to change little actions in their lives cuz here's the thing man people don't realize um if plastic pollution increases and if marine life dies we die it's that simple there's a lot more to it but just in basic if marine life dies we die um so like we need to make sure that we conserve our environment as much as possible cuz more than rain for us the ocean produces most of our oxygen so if we don't look after our climate we're okay you and i bro will survive we will die a natural death touch wood but our children and their children are going to suffer from food shortage um pollution uh oxygen crisis all of those things we'll be okay but they won't so if you plan on having kids you better damn well stop using plastic <laughs> definitely i think that's you know something that really needs to resonate with us especially as a sri lankan community you know i think that's something that all of us really struggle with you know something you know like you said the basic stuff it doesn't have to be you know starting all these amazing movements which we are so proud of you for and you know keep doing what you do it's it's generally such an amazing service but you know you, you don't need to go to that extent your simple thing like you know uh staying away from plastic if you see some plastic on the road pick it up it does you know carry yourself a long way it does you know make a big difference as well so absolutely I, yeah There's and so I, and i just want to say like do something in your capacity like you don't have to start a movement if you don't like going for beach cleanups don't go for a beach cleanup at least do something in your own household that's what i that's what i mean like you are an everyday superhero by just doing something in your own home 100% yeah uh sharan you you speak a lot about kindness as well you know that seems to be a synonym with you know the brand you promote so i want to ask you know why is it kindness that is such a special part of you why is you know it could be something like love empathy generosity so what is it so special about kindness that you know you you say you know you have this caption saying kindness is strength kindness is power why is it kindness cuz kindness is a root cause towards everything kindness is love if you're kind to one another you're loving each other um if you're kind to someone you that does not make you weak it actually makes you strong um and i saw my mom man like she still pours out of an empty cup uh, i need to knock her on the head and knock some sense into her sometimes but how she did it was she taught me the little things man um look after the people who look after you um be there for people who can't be there for themselves um what i've learned as well is be there for yourself being kind to yourself is the first and most important thing besides everything else so i think dude kindness can convert into so many other amazing things which is why when i was doing my live shows the last question that i asked every single person was what does kindness mean to you in your life because everyone has a different perspective i've gotten kindness is fun i have gotten kindness is um taking care of yourself i i gotten kindness is helping one person i heard kindness is doing charity so there's like so many so many things right and for me dude because kindness can be like a base layer and everything else can grow out of it like a freaking tree or flowers or plants you can take it anywhere you want it but that's what i believe how important kindness can be man kindness has been stereotyped as this emotional weakness but it's actually not um what i believe in kindness is is a ripple effect if i'm kind to you today i don't expect anything number one kindness should be with zero expectations but i hope that one day you are kind to someone in the future and that person is kind to someone else and that person is kind to someone else cuz they re- they'll remember how it felt because when i'm kind to you i give you something like i give you a high five or a hug one day or like i give you money when you didn't didn't have it or i dropped you somewhere when you wanted a lift or like we had a meet up and we had an amazing chat and how did that make you feel it made you feel happy it made you feel loved it made you feel accepted it made you feel um confident it made you feel not alone if you can replicate that same feeling in someone else's life man uh, that's all i want you know like i have never done what i do to this day expecting anything out of it like i don't expect anything i would be doing and saying the same things that i'm doing now even if i had zero followers on my instagram it doesn't matter it does not matter to me um it was never about the money or the numbers and that's where happiness and passion comes into play you actually answered two questions that i was just about to ask as well which was the first one was uh, you know you went on your 21 day 
uh, going live for kindness program so i want to ask you know how is it you know being on the other side of the camera where you're being interviewed and i actually want to ask you what kindness does mean to you as well as the second question was you know uh, for those of you who don't know sharon had a meet up earlier this year it was early jan if i'm not mistaken and yeah i want to ask you know cuz uh, i actually uh, on the way i was uh, i wasn't in the best mood cuz i was so hungry and you know those of you that know me i get so this thing when i'm hungry uh, so but you know being around you like it just changed everything for me you know i just felt so amazing so the second question i want to ask you is you know where do you get that vibe from you know where no matter what you know being around someone like you just changes your whole day and makes you feel so amazing my mom easy answer she's a force man she's been beaten to the point that she bled um she's been charged by family she's been uh, she's gone through sexual harassment in public she's been uh, mistreated at work uh, because she's a woman and despite all of that she's the one who starts the party on the dance floor you know like my mom dude she's the most resilient person i've ever met Bless obviously i'm very strict with her i'm very very strict with her because someone has to be strict with her but um man my mom dude like i would always want to have this level of positive energy on anyone but i also want to be able to give someone a hug and be like it's okay and not be so energetic you know and like you know i won't tell the story but you know how someone cried during the meet up she never intended to even speak about her story or even say her story but when she saw other people sharing she opened up that's the power of relatability when i open up about my stories what i can hope for is that someone feels like holy shit I feel that way too. I'm not alone. Man, that's that's all I want to do man and all of it she's in the chat Lochi 15. She's creeping like a stalker. But uh yeah man, it's it's my mom easily. I think we definitely need to give auntie a shout out as well. Bless you auntie. You are truly a gem of an individual. The world needs more people like you for sure. Another question Sharon, I've been uh, I've been getting this a lot is purpose. how do you find your purpose i mean you've done so much for the world for yourself so for people looking to make their mark on the, their community how do you find out what your calling is for how do you find out what your purpose in this world is for try different things um figure out what you think is important what i'm figuring out as well these days man is i can't be everywhere at once i can't advocate for every single thing there is um i can shout out other people who do but i need to focus on maybe two or three things or maybe only two things that i believe in and give all of my energy into it because there's only so much energy you can give to something and there's only so much effort you can give to something try different things um if you want to advocate for women empowerment advocate for women empowerment find out what organizations are advocating for it and work with those organizations even if you can't work with them shout out their pages see if you can contribute via articles or whatever it is see if you can contribute in some certain way uh if you want to talk about men's mental health find out organizations or myself reach out to me talk to me and say hey man how can i help how can i add value to this reach out man just don't sit back and be like oh there's so many problems in the world i don't know what to do figure out what your main passion is and work towards it we can all add towards making a difference For me dude I've come to this point um not acceptance but realizing that maybe I may not be able to make the best change during my lifetime but if I can add tar to the road or pave the road so that I can pass the baton on to people like you I'm okay with that I'm 100% okay with that as long as the baton that goes to you means that you can take it because the foundation is set up the structure set up everything is set up you just need to keep pushing for it you just need to keep driving the car so you can always be involved in things there's so many amazing amazing things happening if you if you have any doubt uh, if you want to start like get involved in something but you don't know what organizations to reach out to or what to do feel free to reach out to me i'm more than happy to have a chat with you you know like i always reply to my dms as much as as fast as i possibly can um so like i'm more than happy with people who want to make a difference man and it takes youngsters like you to like step in i will see thank you so i'm much. not old but you know i'm not <laughs> as young as you <laughs> all right sir i'd like to go on to a bit of a rapid fire q and a session if that's okay with you oh shit let's go all right what does success mean to you um success means i'm happy in life what does happiness mean to you 
happiness means uh, i can provide for my mom and myself um and i don't and i can add value towards people around me if you could change one thing about this world what would it be uh replace all the corrupt politicians with good people i received i meant that three words that are synonymous with sharon will love them kindness vulnerability bravery biggest regret in life uh biggest regret in life I mean I have no regrets man like cuz everything has led me to this moment that's what I believe like every bad decision even mistakes I'm not perfect I'm not mother mary here I've made mistakes every mistake I've made every good decision I've made have has led me to this moment um but if you had if I wanted like a fun regret um man I should not have eaten too much indian one day which resulted in a very nasty toilet <laughs> okay If you could have a meal with anyone living or dead who would it be um Gary Vaynerchuk why uh alive um because he's he's he practices a lot of empathy he's an entrepreneur himself um and he practices a lot of kindness so like i want to learn from him and see like how he has done certain things and get his help on certain things that i'm doing as well uh dead frank sinatra amazing biggest pet pet peeve sorry about that pet peeve um So when I'm home I don't like people talking to me so if people come and talk to me when I'm home when I just want to stay away from people cuz like this is only a certain amount you can take right cuz you talk all the time and you just want time for yourself so when people come and talk to me then I'm just like leave oh, yeah. me alone <laughs> That's really that was an interesting one role model I think I know the answer to this already Um I wouldn't say Gary Vaynerchuk is my role model I just like to have like a chat with him um but if i've had to say role model i would be much more realistic with it i would say my current boss his name's josh far um he is an incredible em- empathetic and one of the smartest people i've met um in real life so i would say role model would be him uh, final question for our rapid fire session is your dream career who dream career my own brand man um just be head of sharon you know uh keep pushing a positive message uh try and find ways of like uh monetizing out of it cuz i know that i need to make an income and look after looking after my mom as well but brand sharon dude that's the best career i could possibly hope for uh we have a question thank you so much for that sharon we have a question in if you could go back and tell your 16 year old self something what would it be good question man you are the most handsome uh confident smart MF I've ever met in my life do not let anyone prove you otherwise no girls no guys nobody can come and make you insecure you are literally the smartest person I've ever met in your life and you will not believe the things you're going to achieve at a young age just keep pushing don't be egotistical but be more confident than you are now that's what I would tell him speak good question speak about egotistical i feel like you know you definitely need a huge shout out for that cuz look in a in a day and age where everyone's trying to be famous everyone's trying to make money like the the brand that you promote is all about just helping people and it's so rare to find people like that and you know just imagine back then had you taken your life which you know praise jesus you haven't imagine you know the lives you have impacted today you probably wouldn't have and you know you would have even it would have even caused some people to take their own life so look how far you've come and you definitely you are definitely the epitome and the definition of what it takes to be humble and you know you say you're insecure and you know you say you're not that confident but you have no issue in telling the whole world what you're insecure but i feel like cuz 99% of insecure people they just keep everything to themselves cuz they don't want people to think of them you know x y z but you know you're just you know going against the stereotype which is amazing so huge shout out to you you know just keep uh, doing what you do so uh, ask couple of questions is where do you Let's see yourself, where do you see yourself in 10 years like how does the road ahead look for sharon um a 37 year old sharon <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no man i don't really here's the thing man if i'm happy in 10 years doesn't matter where i am doesn't matter how much money i'm making doesn't matter if what i've planned hasn't worked out uh, doesn't matter who i've lost who i've gained if i'm happy in 10 years still that's all matters i don't have like a, a money goal or a work goal or anything like that um if i care if i'm happy that means if i'm happy in 10 years that means i've done happy things until then and that means i've been making an impact in sri lanka and around the world then i'm good 
Amazing. Mm-hmm. One final question, Sharon. I've been asking this from all of our speakers who came on board is, you know, with the whole COVID-19 outbreak, there's been so much, you know, chit chat surrounding the future of it. And so many people have come up, you know, on media, on national television, on social media, and, you know, said that this is, you know, this could be, you know, a, a change in avenue, especially for a country like Sri Lanka, who's been so much, you know, civil war, terrorist attack, and now this. And, you know, we have so many people talking about it. So looking forward, it feels like, you know, the youth are very responsible in, you know, the outcome of uh, what we produce as a country. So what final advi- advice would you give the young generation looking to make their mark, looking to change this country, looking to make an impact? And like you said, get rid of, you know, the corrupt politicians and, you know, so on and so forth. What would be your one final advice uh, to the youth? Yeah, man, good question. Um, I would say right now, as we stand, if you are not productive during this time, it's okay. I have not been the same Sharon I was last year. I just looked after myself. I lazed around. I played video games. I focused on my uni work. It's okay if you weren't productive during this time. Coming out of this, do not forget what you've learned, which is keeping in touch with friends and family. Important, right? I told this story yesterday uh, during another interview as well. Um, I heard this story recently where this uh, son um, had his own life sorted and he was hanging out with friends and going to work and stuff like that. And he was ignoring his mom's call for three months. Um, and after three months, uh, his sister called um, and said, hey, you need to come down to the hospital. And um, he, she was, he was like, why? He was surprised. And he, she said, uh, mom has Alzheimer's. She can't remember us anymore. And he just lost it. He cried. He went to the hospital. Um, all of those three months of memories they could have had, he lost. Um, so whatever you've been doing now in terms of keeping in touch with friends and family, make time for it. You won't have the same amount of time, but still make time for it because you never know when someone they could be their last. Um, when you're going into this, the streets are going to be cleaner. Let's keep it that way. Um, let's keep our streets clean. Let's keep our beaches clean. Um, dispose of things smart. Um, Sri Lanka is a beautiful country. I've appreciated Sri Lanka so much more after I left it. Um, and I can't wait to be back because I, I just know how much of a paradise and how much of a creative game changer that Sri Lanka can be. So it is up to all of us to make it. If you see someone throwing something, go up to that person and tell them, please, throw it. Um, it is up to men like us to stop women from being sexually harassed. So if you see that stuff in public transports, use this time to, uh, to talk about it. Another thing that has come on to light, which I wish this was didn't have to take a pandemic to uh, have it, but mental health has been a focus through this pandemic, and let's keep making it a focus. Keep the conversation going so that friends are comfortable to reach out to you and you are comfortable to reach out to friends and family and professional help. Um, That's pretty much it, man. Like, we have to build an ecosystem of supporting each other. We cannot build an ecosystem where it's like, I want you to win, but not more than me. That's a flawed ecosystem and that's what everyone's focusing on right now and I hate it. Um, We need to be actual influencers that actually make a difference. Uh, Sir, we have just one and a half minutes remaining. So is it okay if I uh, end this and go back, uh, come live again just to wrap things up? Yeah, man. Absolutely. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Come back. Yes, for sure.